most of you are probably familiar with what short haul planes look like. A couple of seats on the left, a couple of seats on the right, not all that much legroom, a tray table, and if you're lucky, a USB port. In contrast to that, long haul planes mostly come with two aisles, better legroom, in-flight entertainment, and at least a USB port, if not a power port as well. Only that what you just saw was a short haul plane as well. And I don't mean a plane configured for long haul operation that just happens to operate the occasional short haul flight. Japan Airlines entire A350-900 fleet serves only one purpose, operating domestic flights within Japan with all of them being three hours or less. So that, that is the short haul economy class aboard Japan Airlines Airbus A350. You don't believe me? Well, then you're in for a treat, because in today's video we'll look at just how amazing those planes are, why on earth they got such expensive planes and seats for one hour domestic flights, and gaze upon the majestic Mount Fuji. I'm glad you're tagging along, so let's get going. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers, welcome to this new episode of our flight review series, Brutally Honest. We just arrived here at Osaka's Itami Airport, the older and smaller domestic brother to Kansai International Airport after flying in on all Nippon Airways Dash 8 Q400 from Fukuoka. So, as you can see, Japan doesn't just have large twin owl planes operating domestic flights, they also have little turboprops, and even though it was a smaller plane, the flight was no less interesting, so make sure to check out that video as well. Now we're at Osaka's Itami Airport, which has a single large terminal building split up into a northern and southern half, occupied by Japan Airlines, ANA and their partners respectively. The airport is still officially called Osaka International Airport, despite not having had regular international flight connections since the opening of Kansai International Airport in the late 90s. Itami Airport, as it's more colloquially known, is connected by monorail to the nearest train station, Hotarugaike, from where you can change onto the Hankyu Takarazuka line, giving you a direct connection to Umeda Station in the central business district of Osaka, as well as towards Takarazuka in the other direction. And while Itami Airport is technically the closest commercial airport to Kyoto, getting there is not significantly easier or more comfortable than from nearby Kansai or Kobe airports. So if Kyoto is where you want to go, I'd recommend simply picking whichever airport has the cheapest flights into. But I digress. The main check-in area is located right where you first enter the terminal building. I've mentioned a few unique aspects of Japanese domestic flights and how they're administered in the ANA Q400 video and those intricacies result in domestic passengers and those with international connections required to be checked in separately. However, today's flight is the last time I make use of my remaining One World Frequent Flyer status, so I get to use the elegant business class check-in area of Japan Airlines. The security check was quick and efficient, as always in Japan, where they even let you borrow a pair of slippers for when you have to take off your shoes. What I like most about Japanese airports is that, due to their efficiency, passengers tend to arrive much later for their flights than in other parts of the world. For domestic flights, Japan Airlines cutoff times for backdrop are 30 minutes before departure, which is also the recommended minimum time to pass through security. So no need for arriving at the airport an hour and a half before departure. And that results in the terminals being way less crowded because people spend less time in them. But keep in mind, that's just for domestic flights. International flights are still the same as elsewhere. Additionally, everything from baggage handling to security is very reliable, with long wait times being the exception. And one more thing I appreciate about Japanese airports is the amount of high quality restaurants and food stalls airside, which are never as overpriced as those in Europe or North America. Over there you can see a massive model of the Mitsubishi Space Jet, a regional jet that was in development by Japanese conglomerate Mitsubishi until the project was cancelled just last year. They were so far into development that they even had entire planes already finished and testing underway with hundreds of orders from various different airlines. But the myriad of problems that arose became so expensive to fix, the manufacturer decided against further pursuing the project. 
This is an extreme simplification, and the fallout of the pandemic as well as the shrinking regional jet segment also contributed to the space jet's regretful demise. And I mean, look at the plane we're about to spend just an hour on. Not a small regional jet, an Airbus A350-900. Today, we'll fly aboard Juliet Alpha 10 X-Ray Juliet, a 2021-built A350-900. Today, this airplane operates three round trips from Tokyo Haneda to Osaka Itami and nothing else. The plane has arrived on time at 9.35 am and will head out at 10.40 am, meaning this 369-seater Airbus A350 is turned around in just 65 minutes. But that once again raises the question, how does that make sense? Well, Japan has a very unique domestic airline market. In addition to the country's large demand, Japan's airports often have pretty severe nighttime flight bans, meaning they are by law not allowed to operate at night. Osaka's Itami Airport, for example, is only allowed to operate from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m., which is extremely restrictive. And in order to meet the demand during those limited operating hours, Japan's two main carriers, ANA and Japan Airlines, use plenty of large twin-aisle aircraft on very short domestic flights. Japan's very expensive Shinkansen tickets and countless islands and smaller cities not connected to the high-speed rail network also contribute to a healthy demand for domestic flights. Japan Airlines takes this to the extreme, having an entire fleet of 15 Airbus A350-900 that haven't seen a flight longer than 3 hours since their delivery flight. And they all only ever operate one of five routes, Tokyo Haneda to Sapporo New Chitose, Fukuoka, Osaka Itami and Okinawa, as well as Osaka Itami to Okinawa. Now it's time to board our flight, which works very well thanks to the plentiful clear signage and cooperative fellow passengers. JAL's A350-900s come in one of two configurations. Neither has life led business class seats, the configuration is already crazy enough. Up front, there are two rows of a 222 configured domestic first class, totaling 12 custom made seats manufactured by Japanese company Jumco. Then there are one of two configurations, either one with less or one with more business class seats. We're on the premium heavy aircraft, which, as far as I can tell, sets a world record for the commercial aircraft with the most business class seats. Placed in a 232 pattern, Japan Airlines has 94 business class seats on this plane, featuring the Recaro PL3530, a seat typically found in premium economy class on long haul flights. The rest of the plane features a 333 configured economy class with one of the best long haul economy class seats on the market, the Recaro CL3710, and they use this seat on short haul flights. The window seats in the 39th row don't have windows, keep that in mind when selecting your seat. I'm in 47A on this one hour flight to Tokyo. Each seat comes with a headrest which is adjustable vertically as well as on the sides, and waiting for everyone already are complementary pairs of headphones. Being 180 centimeters tall, the legroom is very good, especially for a short haul flight. The seat back pocket has a very practical design with additional extra pockets for things like glasses or your phone. The seats also come with bifold tray tables with cup holders on the back. A personal universal power outlet is installed right in front of you, with an additional literature compartment behind it. And each seat comes with an adjustable entertainment touchscreen, with an audio port and a USB port at the bottom, and on the side of each seat you may find a code hook. The plane is equipped with a Panasonic X3 entertainment system with movies and TV shows available to watch on demand, local and international options available. Most movies, however, can only really be enjoyed on flights to Okinawa. We certainly won't be on the plane long enough today to watch Top Gun Maverick in its entirety. This Airbus A350 is even equipped with onboard cameras. With boarding being completed within minutes, we're already pushing back and getting ready for departure. The design around Japan Airlines A350 was done by UK-based design consultancy Tangerine which, with their various design choices, aimed for, and I quote, an infused essence. The winglets, for example, are coated in Japan Airlines' traditional red, merging into the modern white of the wing as a kind of fusion of old and new. It's a beautiful day to fly, and I get the feeling that in a moment we'll get a gorgeous view over the Kansai region.
after just a few minutes in the air, we're already passing Nagoya. At this point, a complimentary beverage service is offered. A small variety of non-alcoholic drinks is available, where I went with Japan Airlines' signature beef consomme, basically a soup without noodles. The reason why I've chosen to sit on the left is because I'm hoping to catch a glimpse of Mount Fuji. And how did I know it would be on the left? On Japan Airlines' website, there is a detailed section about how you can see Mount Fuji from the plane. Of course, there's never a guarantee as flight paths can change last minute for a variety of reasons, but the built-in calculator told me to sit on the left. And did it work? Yes, it did. And what a gorgeous weather we're blessed with today. Down there you can also see the airport of Shizuoka, easily identifiable by the large signage. It's fairly common in Japan to write locations of major buildings or airports in large letters. This is supposed to help with orientation during disaster relief in the aftermath of an earthquake or tsunami, where other means of navigation might not be available or should the area be rendered unrecognizable. And now we're starting our descent into Tokyo. The city is already visible in the distance, and with that our short flight is coming to an end already. Traveling across Japan is always an adventure, whether it's by plane, by shinkansen, or even by bus. Oftentimes planes are in the center of the Venn diagram, as quick as the shinkansen and almost as inexpensive as buses, if you book early enough. With that, welcome to Tokyo's Haneda Airport. Now I'm off to pick up my easily identifiable suitcase and then hop onto the express monorail into the city. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and coming along. If you enjoy flight reviews like this one, please support our work by liking this video and subscribing to our channel for more. All of these amazing people have decided to sponsor our channel and contribute financially towards our mission to share straightforward, information-packed videos about as many airlines as flights as possible. If you're interested in helping us out that way as well, click on the join button below this video to learn more or check out the membership section on our channel where the lowest tier starts at just 2 euros per month, which is just 24 euros per year. Thank you once again for coming along and for your support, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you again for a new video next week. And while you're here, why not take a look at what it's like to fly on Delta's Airbus A330neo in economy class from Tokyo Haneda to Los Angeles, a review which is already available on our channel as well and which you'll get to by simply clicking on the thumbnail displayed right now.